Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be running you through this mix. Let's have a listen. Okay, let's start off with drums. The samples I'm using are Mjolnir drums by Solemn Tones, and I based my preset off the default one, Balanced. And I have the snare up a bit in the mixer section and the Humanize at 3. And I have everything routed to its own channel over here on the left, and how you do that is you click the routing button, and then I have kick being sent to 1, snare to 2, all the toms to 3, hi-hat to 4, all the crash cymbals and rides and everything to 5 and then the room to six. Let's start off with kick. So I'll bypass all the inserts and sends. Let's hear what it sounds like dry. So it sounds pretty good to me. It's a little uh, clicky and thin, I would say. So we'll start off with the CQ. We're taking out some 6.5K. Next up, I have R bass. I'm um, just kind of boosting the fundamental frequency, which usually lies around 60 hertz on a kick drum. Um, I have the intensity pretty low. You don't need it high with this plugin. Like, it gets pretty ridiculous. Like, if I crank it here. Yeah, you do not need a lot. So I have it around minus 16. And already right there, it's sounding a lot less clicky. This is before. And then after. Sounds a lot more balanced to me. Next up, we have a compressor. And the point of this compressor is to add punch and attack to the kick drum. In order to do that, you need a slower attack. So I have my attack around 30 seconds and release around 120. Ratio of 4, and I'm aiming for about 3 dB of gain reduction. So that's adding some nice punch there. And last in the chain is JST Clip. I'm doing about 6 dB of clipping. This is kind of just taming any harsh transients that might get too pokey and I'm not touching the trim. I'm also sending the kick to a reverb to add some size and depth. Uh, I'll just turn both these on. This is just a side chain, you don't have to worry about that. It's the D verb here that's controlling the reverb. And it's really low here at minus 16 on the send. And I'll show you the reverb settings. Uh, decay of 1.26 seconds. And this just adds a little subtle space to the kick. It makes it sound a bit bigger, more sustained. So let's hear it without it. Now with. All right, let's move on to the snare. So here's the snare completely dry. So yeah, it sounds really good off the bat. I'm doing pretty similar processing, adding some compression for some punch, attack around 30, release around 120, ratio of four. I'm getting around 6 dB of gain reduction, 5 to 6. Next up we have an EQ, which is pretty much doing nothing. It's probably just looking at the EQ curve. And I felt like nothing needed to change, so I left it. And then lastly we have GST clip again, doing around 6 dB of clipping. Uh, I'm turning the trim down a bit, just to kind of get the gain staging right, so the snare's not too loud. And like with the kick, I'm sending it to a reverb as well. The snare reverb has a decay of about 0.9 seconds. I'll play it without first. And then with. Pretty subtle, but add some size. Okay, next up we have toms. Here they are dry. First up we have an EQ, just filtering some really low stuff and looking at the EQ curve. Next up we have a Pro C2 doing similar stuff. Attack of 30, release of 60, ratio of 4. And we're just getting just under 3 dB of gain reduction to add some punch. And then lastly we have GIST clip. I have it on the times 2 mode which just takes it and doubles it so it's even louder and more clipped. This is how it sounds with the clipper. All 
I have absolutely nothing on the hats. Okay, so next up is symbols. Uh, I'm starting off with an EQ here, doing some notching. I'll boost these just to show you what they sounded like. So really whistly frequencies here. Um, 4K is always one to look out for. Anywhere from 4 to 6K I find is really where the harsh stuff lives. And next up we have another EQ doing a more broadband reduction at 13K. Uh, that's just kind of to tame that build up that's happening here. Kind of just sounds like sandpaper. Last up we have a pull textile EQ. This is just to kind of bring back a bit of what we lost because I thought it was a bit too dull. Last up is the room tracks. All I'm doing is a high pass at 250. Uh, that's just to take out some of the unnecessary low end buildup. All that stuff. All these close mics and their respective reverbs are being sent to a drum bus in which I have an instance of DF comp on. I'm kind of trying to do a parallel thing here where I'm compressing the hell out of it and then just backing off the mix a bit. So here it is at full wet. So really kind of smeared and messy sounding when it's that high. If you back it off though, you get some nice aggression and sustain out of the drums. Here's without. And with. So that wraps up drums. Let's move on to guitars. For guitars, I'm using the Odin 2 from Solemn Tones. I have the Humanize at 4, and that's about it within the program. Uh, this program doesn't come with any amp modeling in it, so it's just DIs. It sounds like this. Which is cool because you get to run it through whatever amp sim you want. I ended up choosing the Archetype Nolly. Um, just boosting the gain a bit, highs a tiny bit, doing the classic uh, overdrive trick, drive at zero, tone full, level full, and I'm using amp 3 and cap 3. Next up in the chain I have an EQ, just taking out some of the highs, it's pretty abrasive without it. And with the EQ. I'm also doing some filtering at 100 and at 12k just to kind of make the guitar sit where it should. Next up we have the Pro C2. This is a really cool trick if you want maximum impact in your mix. You set the attack similar to the snare and kick drum around 30 milliseconds. Set the release around 60. Uh, pretty high ratio of around 6. And then you're going for around 60 dB of gain reduction. So what this is doing is really enhancing the pick attack of the guitars. If I crank it, you'll hear what it's really doing. So that initial ch -ch -ch of the guitars is really getting amplified. This is way too extreme of a setting, but I have it set here during around 5, 6 dB and it, it sounds really cool. Add some more punch to the mix. This doesn't work in every scenario. It's pretty geared towards high energy music but uh, it's definitely something cool to play around with. All right, last up in the guitar chain, we have this L1 limiter. I'm using this to control the dynamics and make sure nothing too peaky gets out. Uh, sometimes when you do that compression trick, you can get some harsh spikes and less pleasant sounding ones. So this kind of just keeps everything in check. Here's without it. And then with. And that wraps up guitars. Moving on to bass, I'm using the Loki Bass 2 plugin from Solemn Tones with the Loki Glass 1 preset. Let's hear how it sounds raw. So that sounds good to me, just a bit kind of low mid heavy, so I'm carving some of that out. That helps clear it up quite a bit. Next up I'm using a transient shaper, the Trans X Wide from Waves. And I'm doing a similar thing I did with the guitars where I'm enhancing the first 30 milliseconds of the sound 
to get more punch. So let's hear what that sounds like. So you hear that pick attack again is getting accentuated. And lastly, we have the L1 to control dynamics. Let's hear without. And with. Okay, now that all the instruments have been covered, let's go over the master bus compression. So I'm doing an internal side chain so that the compressor isn't reacting to the bass. I have a ratio of 4 to 1, attack of 10 milliseconds, and I'm using the auto release at 18%. I'm aiming for around 2 to 3 dB of gain reduction, mostly from the snare. It's here without. With. So that's really helping the snare be controlled and just kind of sit in the mix. I should mention that every instrument is being sent to this bus with the compressor on it. And lastly, just doing a bit of brightening on the overall mix uh, and also taking out some sub at 60 hertz and also a high pass filter at 29 hertz. That about wraps it up. If you guys enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And let me know if you want any other topics covered, whether it's editing, drum programming, songwriting, you name it. Just let me know in the comments. Peace!